How old is the Earth? Six to 10,000 years old? Older? How precisely can a creation date be calculated? This week on Creation Magazine Live. Welcome to Creation Magazine Live. My name is Calvin Smith. And I'm Richard Fangrad. And our topic this week is extremely controversial. It's yep. the issue of the age of the earth. Questions we're going to discuss include, uh, does the Bible teach a 6,000-year-old earth? Uh, how precisely can a creation date be determined? Uh, why do most scientists believe the earth is old? Um, this issue is very controversial inside the church, and most people outside the church think if you, you know, believe that God created a universe only thousands of years ago, well... Basically, you're, you're just some anti-science, ignorant loser, basically, with no education. Yeah, and that's saying it nicely. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, some of the comments we get on past shows can't even be repeated here, the yep. comments on YouTube and so on that are, that are online. Uh, there, there's a huge amount of abuse heaped on anyone who believes that God created recently. Uh, for, for most people today, it's shocking to hear anyone suggest that the earth is young. Yes. I mean, I, I remember the first time I heard that, and I thought, yeah, right, whatever. And you grew up uh, in a it, Christian home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that may be what many of you are thinking right now, uh, but a recent creation provides a much better fit with scientific observations, and it's what Scripture clearly implies, and we'll, that, that we're, we're going to talk about more details later in, yeah. the, in the show. Because that's actually the so, more important thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this week we're going to wade through these controversial waters and try to clarify and refine what science and the Bible suggests about the age of the earth. Right. We're, we're not going to uh, focus on debunking the millions and billions of years uh, ideas. We've, we've kind of already done that in, in a lot Many of past times. shows uh, that you can watch on creation.com. And, and there's hundreds of articles uh, showing that scientific observations in astronomy, botany, geology, fossils, many other fields fit with a recent creation far better than they fit with millions of years. Right. That might surprise yeah. some people, but it's true. So the best place to find this information is on, uh, on these topics is at creation.com. Just click the topics, uh, click the topics tab, uh, scroll down to uh, geology and the age of the earth section and have a, a look at some of those articles. Yeah, it's a great resource. Yeah. Uh, so, how old is the Earth? To answer that question, we can examine a, a wide variety of age dating methods. There are uh, hundreds of physical processes that can be used to age date the Earth, uh, the oceans, the atmosphere, rocks, uh, etc. Uh, about 90% of all those dating methods give ages that are too young for evolution. <laughs> it's not, not very popular to hear that. But, yeah. However, all dating methods involve making assumptions. So what's the best dating method if they all involve assumptions? One of the best is if you have a historical record. Right. Uh, coins, for example, if you find coins at a dig site, they'll have the date on them and so on. Right. Uh, written records, maybe on clay tablets years ago, describing certain events. This king became king at this time, and then there was an eclipse, and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, and of Can course, you... for Christians, the Bible, it's a historical record. Yeah, it is. Right? <laughs> it's not only that, it's God's word. It's a revelation from God, his creation, describing what he's like so, uh, so that we can know him. So does the Bible teach 6,000 years? Well, yes and no. Uh, nowhere in right. Scripture do we read that God created the universe around 4,000 B.C. However, that time frame can be logically deduced from Scripture. It's the same thing with the Trinity, right? right, right. You, you, the, the, that word doesn't appear in the Bible, but that's what the Bible describes God to be like, a Trinitarian. Right. Some say that the, the word Trinity shouldn't be used because it's not in the Bible, but by that reasoning, then we shouldn't use the word Bible because the word Bible doesn't appear in the Bible. Right. So, so some, some, some bad reasoning there. But we can arrive at a creation date by examining the time statements that the Bible does make. Right. And, and for example, the chronogenealogies. The yes. genealogies... Yep where the age of the father at the time of the son's birth is given in an unbroken chain from Adam to Abraham. Simply adding up the years gives us about 2,008 years from the creation of Adam to the birth of Abraham. Right. Abraham yep. was born around 2000 BC. So that gives us a creation date of around 4000 BC. Yep. We're gonna get into those details, those fine details when we come back. 
Have you ever wondered how Noah would have fitted dinosaurs on the ark? For example, how would a large sauropod like Brachiosaurus even get in the door? This question is often used to challenge the validity of the Bible, but new research has provided a stunning answer. By studying the growth rings in dinosaur bones, scientists have discovered that dinosaurs underwent a tremendous adolescent growth spurt. Take for example the huge Apatosaurus. Scientists hypothesized that their growth spurt started at about five years of age when they weighed about one ton. During the spurt, however, they put on about five tons per year until they reached about 25 tons. The Bible tells us that God brought the animals to Noah for the ark voyage. Therefore, it's reasonable to assume that God would have chosen young dinosaurs that hadn't yet undergone their growth spurt. So yes, there was plenty of room for Brachiosaurus. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. Well, if you just tuned in this week, we're talking about calculating a, a date for creation. Yeah, how precisely can we get to that date? And now, a creation date of around 4000 BC can be calculated from the chronogenealogies in Genesis 5 and Genesis 11. The precision of that date or, or the timing of, of any historical event is constrained by, by the precision of the data that we're given, obviously. Right. So the, the, the timing that we're given in the chronogenealogies is accurate to within one year of the event. For example, right. we know yeah. that Adam was 130 years old when he fathered Seth. But we don't know if he was 130 in three months right. or if he was just shy of 131. So, so to demonstrate, let's think of the event of the flood. When you add up the chronogenealogies, we know that the flood happened around 1656 AM, which would be Anno uh, Mundi in Latin, the year of the world, plus up to less than 10 years, right? Right, that's because we have 10 numbers, that's the ages of 10 people that, that, that are listed there, that have less than a year of uncertainty. Right. So if all of the numbers recorded were just shy of the next birthday, for instance, if Adam was 130 and 11 months right. when he fathered Seth, and Seth was 105 and 11 months when he fathered Enosh, and so on, the flood could have been as late as 1665 AM, because almost another full year could be added to each of those 10 numbers. So right. you can have almost 10 years added on to that. So in, in, in trying to calculate a, a creation date, the same sorts of uncertainties apply. Right. Yeah. Since Abraham is the 19th generation after Adam, it means that the range of years between the two would be 2008 to 2026 years. That's, that's 2008 plus up to less than 19 years. Right. So yeah. given the biblical date uh, data, Creation took place between 2008 and 2026 years before Abraham was born. Before Abraham, yeah. yeah. You just need to figure out when Abraham lived. But, exactly. Uh, uh, clearly, this, this small uncertainty in the precision for the date God created is not going to give any comfort to people who want to add thousands of years to human <laughs> history. It's just not going to work. And, and the millions of years are just impossible to reconcile with the Bible here anyways, as we've mentioned many, many times before on this program and at creation.com. Right. Now, now, many people have come up with uh, creation, uh, dates for creation. Uh, look, look at this chart here. Right. Note that people and cultures from all over the world have used a variety of sources, not, not just the Bible, to arrive at a creation date of around 4000 BC. Yeah, even famous scientists are listed here. Johann Kepler <laughs> arrived at a, a creation date of 3992 BC. Mm -hmm. Also, Isaac Newton, now he, he's not in the list here, but he's widely regarded still today as the greatest scientist of all time, but he wrote more on biblical history and doctrine than he ever wrote on science. <laughs> Incredible. And he vigorously defended a creation date of around 4000 BC. Right. There are various chronologies uh, competing with each other today, uh, though all of them, uh, you know, in the same ballpark uh, outcome as this chart shows yeah. here. By just taking the words of scripture in, in the manner that they are written, without twisting their meaning, it, it gives a straightforward uh, chronology that results in a world that is around 6,000 years old. Right, you just take it as it's written and that's yeah. what you get. Yeah, the Bible's not just a book about spiritual matters. It's important to note that what we believe about God is based on historical claims. Mm -hmm. So if the history that the Bible records in, is inaccurate, then the theology must be as well. The death and resurrection of Christ is a good example. If the details about Christ really dying and really coming back from the dead are not historically accurate, then the central theology of Christianity falls apart. Right. It's clear from the very first verse 
uh, verses of Genesis. The Bible is concerned with giving a factual account of how God uh, has interacted with the earth since the beginning of time. Absolutely. In the beginning. That's when, right? Yep. God, that's who, <laughs> yeah. uh, created, that's an action, the earth. And that's what. So who, what, when, and the action that connects them all. It, it's very interesting. I've seen over and over and over again where long earth um, creationists and theistic evolutionists they always try to say that Genesis isn't about how God created or when he created. <laughs> yes. It's about yeah. why he created. You know, the only thing I don't read in Genesis is why, is why God, God created. created. Yeah. It's not in Genesis. <laughs> it's all about who did it, when he did it, how, you know. It's all the facts, the sequence that things happened. Exactly. Yeah. The specific creatures on specific days. It's so detailed. It doesn't tell you why God created. Yeah. Right? We, we yeah. can find out things like that <laughs> later on. One of the ways the, the, the biblical authors communicated that they were giving actual history is by recording lifespans and by measuring the amount of time between certain events. Historical events were recorded and the theology of Christianity is based on historical events. That's right. Uh, it, interesting with other religions that you see out there, history and, and facts uh, in science and history and stuff like they don't really relate. Take the Eastern religions, for example, for the most part. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, if, if all of reality right now is just an illusion, if, if, if all is one, just all is, 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 is God, then what does history even have to do with anything? Do yeah, facts nothing, have nothing. to do with anything? Um, it's kind of unusual because who's asking the question if everything's one, if everything's God, right? You couldn't even be an individual asking that question. But anyway, um, you know, and, and you look at uh, things like even the quasi-Christian cults like Mormonism. Right. You know, you, when you go to look at actual dates and events and places and stuff like that, you can't find them. It's one of the, one of the problems, but it's one of the discerning factors with the Christian faith. Yeah. Awesome. And we'll be back. Creation Ministries International focuses on the Bible's first book, Genesis, and the creation evolution issue. Many of our speakers are scientists with PhDs who, before joining CMI, were employed in various scientific fields. Creation Ministry speakers go to churches, equipping and encouraging people with the message of the truth and authority of the Bible and its relevance to the real world. To locate upcoming CMI events or inquire about booking a speaker into your church, visit creation.com. So on this week's episode, we're talking about how accurately we can discern uh, from the data uh, when God created the universe. Right. So for, yep. for more details, there's actually a great article about this uh, topic yes. on the website. Yep. And it's just go to creation.com slash 6,000 years. Great information there. Yeah. Now we've explained a little bit about uh, where there could be small uncertainties in calculating a creation date. Right. But the, the, the article that you just mentioned goes into a much more detail than we have time to discuss uh, uh, this week. There are people like Hugh Ross, for example, who heads up an organization promoting the idea that human history could be many thousands of years old, right. right? contrary to what the Bible says. So how does he get around Scripture? He's a professing Christian. How does he get around Scripture? Right, well, he's got an apologetic ministry, too. So what, what he claims is that the Genesis 5 and 11, the genealogies there, are largely incomplete. There, there could be a big bunch of gaps. Yes. So he, uh, he claims, quote, the words translated into English say this, when X had lived Y years, he became the father of Z. Some reading the same passage in Hebrew would see a second possibility. When X had lived Y years, he became the father of a family line that included or culminated in Z. But none of, the ex of his examples of gaps in genealogies, he points to differences between uh, Matthew 1, 8, 9, and, and 1 Chronicles 3, 10 to 12, mention the age of the father at the birth right. of the next name in the line. So they're irrelevant to the issue of the Genesis genealogies, which Wait. do. That's why they're called chronogenealogies. Yes, yeah. Right. Also, Matthew's genealogy was clearly intended to be incomplete. Right. It's stated that way in Matthew 1.17 to be three groups of 14 names. That's not actually how it happened. There's more people there. This is likely because the Hebrew letters for the name David, David is obviously a key yeah. figure in, in the narrative, they add up to 14. Right. And in Genesis 5 and Genesis 11, there's no intention to, to do any no, of that. No. Ross also points out that the Hebrew uh, word, ab, father, can mean grandfather or ancestor. All right, fair while, enough. While ben, son, can mean grandson or descendant. 
but this argument is irrelevant to the Genesis genealogies, right. um, since the year is given to the next person in the line, regardless of whether the person is a son, grandson, or, or some other uh, distant descendant. So it's just, it's just fodder, it's just something that, you know, chaff to try yeah. to confuse the yeah. issue. And, and it's one thing to assert that there could be gaps, but quite another to suggest exactly where gaps could, could even plausibly be inserted. Right. There are a number of places where a gap is explicitly ruled out. Right. For example, have a look at this. Seth is definitely a direct son of Adam and Eve. He's seen as a replacement for Abel, right. who's killed by Cain. Enosh must be a son of Seth because Seth named him. Uh, Jude 14 says that Enoch was the seventh from Adam. That obviously indicates a straightforward father-son relationship right. from Adam to Enoch seven generations later. That's right. And uh, Lamech named Noah, so Lamech must be uh, his father, not oh. just an ancestor. Right. Shem, Ham, and Japheth were definitely ordinary sons of Noah since they accompanied him on the ark. Uh, Arphaxad was plainly a son of Shem because he was born only two years after the flood. Abram, Haran and Nahor were a Terra's ordinary sons since they journeyed together from Ur. Yeah, all right. So the, the, think of Methuselah, uh, for example. Now, this, this is interesting. Enoch, uh, a pre-flood prophet, according to, uh, to Jude 14, right. gave his son a name <clears throat> meaning, when he dies it shall be sent, uh, or, or, or something like that. And the, the Masoretic chronology, without any gaps, would yep. place his death in the year of the flood. So. Where can you insert gaps? <laughs> Where do you insert the gaps? Yeah. Um, also, if there were gaps, the number of uh, missing generations would need to be huge. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Ross dates the flood to between 20,000 and 30,000 years ago. But since the Genesis 11 people had sons at age 35 or less, to add even 10,000 years would take over 250 missing <laughs> generations. Where do so, you put those so in? Chrono genealogies would be just a waste of time. Yeah, why would you even be mentioning so these people? missing people. Yeah. Um, for many more details regarding the biblical chronogenealogies, you can read the article at creation.com slash chronogenealogies. It's a great article there featuring many, many more details than we have time to go into. Right. And here's a, a very detailed timeline that you can download for free at creation.com uh, slash timeline. You can see the ages of the people in the Genesis chronogenealogies. Methuselah dies the year of the flood. You can see that there. Along the bottom in blue, you can see the amount of time, the history that each book of the Bible covers. Look at Genesis. Genesis covers a huge span of history. This is a very information-rich timeline, and you can download it for free at creation.com. And we'll be back. Many people think that Charles Darwin first thought of the idea of natural selection. However, others prior to Darwin described the concept, although they sometimes used slightly different terminology. For instance, Carl Linnaeus, the creationist father of taxonomy, wrote of a struggle for survival in nature. Similarly, James Hutton wrote about the concept of natural selection. Probably the most influential character was Edward Blythe, an English chemist and zoologist who wrote major articles on natural selection two decades before Darwin published On the Origin of Species. Darwin differed in trying to use the concept of natural selection to promote the idea of unlimited change. However, modern studies of natural selection have revealed that it is limited. It can only select between variations that already exist. It is incapable of producing the new genetic information required for true evolutionary change to occur, such as growing feathers on a reptile. Natural selection is not evolution. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. All right, our subject this week is how old is the Earth? How precisely can we calculate a creation date based on both historical records and the Bible? That's our topic. Right, there's a great article by physicist uh, Russell Humphreys. And yes. it's available on, um, well, it's called Why Most Scientists Believe the World is Old. And if you want to follow along, it's at creation.com slash most-scientists. And in the opening paragraph, he summarizes three fascinating ironies. Uh, one is that a majority of scientists, the evolutionists, rely on a minority of the relevant data. That's because only about 10% of dating methods give the vast ages required for evolution to work. Number two, a minority of scientists, the creationists, yes. <laughs> use the majority of the relevant data. So about 90% of all dating methods support a creation date that is too young for evolution. And number three, the public's impression is that it's the other way around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if you want a sample of some of the data Dr. Uh, Humphreys was alluding to, go to creation.com slash age and you'll see 101 evidences for recent creation. It's a great little article there. Yeah. Uh, so, so the question is then, 
if the evidence is so strongly for a young Earth, why do most scientists believe otherwise? And the answer is simple, and, and he says this in his article. Most scientists believe that the Earth is old because they believe that most other scientists believe that the Earth is old. Right. Uh, and then Dr. Humphreys relates how he was speaking with a geochemist at Sandia National Laboratories where he worked as a physicist. He presented him with one piece of evidence for a young world, the rapid accumulation of sodium in the oceans. Now this was an ideal dating method in this case because uh, with, to use with this geochemist, since much of geochemistry deals with chemicals in the ocean. Right. So given today's rates of sodium input into the oceans, it should be much saltier if their evolutionary age is correct. Right. So Dr. Humphreys wanted to see how he explained uh, possible ways for sodium to get out of the sea right. fast enough to balance the rapid input of sodium. After more than an hour, he finally admitted, uh, that the evolutionist said, he knew of no way to remove sodium from the sea fast enough. That would mean the sea could not be billions of years old. Realizing that, he said, since we know from other sciences that the ocean is billions of years old, such a removal process must exist. That's incredible, yeah. So he's placing his trust in other scientists. Right, exactly. When Dr. Humphrey started mentioning other young Earth evidences, he stopped him and said he didn't want to examine the evidence for himself because he said, People I trust don't accept creation. He said, yeah, well, I trust Stephen Jay Gould. At that time, uh, Gould was a, a paleontologist, was, was still alive and considered the world's most prominent evolutionist. So that was his yeah. authority. Wow. So he, he trusted other authorities, but ignored highly relevant data. In who his own field. In, in, in his own field, yeah. Uh, who do you trust? Who do you consider to be an authority on the age of the Earth? And these yeah. are serious questions that, that you can consider. Yeah. Uh, what source of information do you trust to know, for example, that your sins have been forgiven? A uh, scientist? You would trust scientific data for that? Who do you trust with your eternal destiny? Is, is God not worthy of your trust in all areas? If, if you trust that he has paid for your sins on the cross, thereby making you fit for salvation, why wouldn't you also trust him with the date of creation? Or are, are you placing your uh, trust in Christians who twist God's word to try to make millions of years fit in where the text won't allow it? Christians don't determine truth. <laughs> That's right. It, it's not what Christians say. It's not about what Christians say. Christians don't determine truth. That's right. It's not about what we say or what CMI says. Right. What does God say about the age of the earth? That's the issue. It, it's a matter of dealing with God's word in a way that's, that faithfully draws the meaning from the text without Absolutely. distortion from outside ideas in all areas, including the date for creation. Uh, yeah. Refuting Compromise is a book that refutes all these positions that say that Genesis needs to be altered by millions of years, etc. It shows how a straightforward reading of the text results in a history that includes a recent creation in six uh, literal days, followed by a global flood. That's the way you can explain all the fossil uh, layers and, and supposed millions of years of history there. And it shows how scientific observations support biblical history. Yeah, yeah. as a viewer of Creation Magazine Live, you can get 30% off of the, both the physical or the, or the digital book, either one. Yeah. <laughs> Just order online at creation.com and use the coupon code CMLRC. You get 30% off of that fantastic resource. We'll be right back. Refuting Evolution is a powerful, concise summary that explains where the common evidences used to promote evolution in textbooks are wrong, while at the same time showing how creation is better supported by scientific observations. It will stimulate much discussion and help students and teachers think more critically about the creation-evolution debate, particularly the often overlooked differences between operational and historical science and how they relate to the topic of origins. Order your copy today at creation.com. Welcome back. We've been talking about how old is the Earth, and this is the feedback section, and we've got uh, today's feedback. Uh, the correspondent's kind of nervous about taking a stand on the age of the Earth, and, and right. they're kind of preferring a less dogmatic approach. And, and so here's the, uh, the letter that was written in. I'm a Christian, and I've, I have been for some time. I enjoy uh, both the Creation and the Journal of Creation magazines that CMI produces. However, I cringe sometimes when I read or hear speakers dogmatically say that the biblical stance is that the Earth is seven or so thousand years old. I know it seems that way, but I can't help thinking that if it's categorically proved, or the evidence strongly suggests, that the Earth is much older, say millions of years old, that a lot of people would discard the more important things the Bible talks about. My suggestion is why not take the, less, the safer, less dogmatic stance and say something like, there is strong biblical support 
that suggests the age of the earth is seven or, or, or so thousand years. But this should not be taken as biblical doctrine or dogma or something like that. I just worry that the whole thing is going to crumble into a heap with a lot of people with it when one places the credibility of scripture upon such shaky doctrines as the age of the earth. Sincerely, Marty. All right. Yeah, so that's the, that's the article. There's, there's way more here than we can respond to. If you want to follow along, it's creation.com slash reliable, and you can, uh, you can have a look at that article there. And one of our folks, as is the normal custom, responded to that uh, kind of an interspersed fashion. And so so the, the writer, the, the person who wrote in said, I know that it seems that way, but I can't help thinking that if it's categorically proved or the evidence strongly suggests that the earth is much older than, say, millions of years old, and then the comments that, uh, that we made on that was, your comments here reveal some common misconceptions about science, proof, and age. Mm -hmm. You also seem unsure about the reliability of the Bible. Science will never be able to categorically prove the earth is millions of years old. Sorry. It has to do with nature of proof and stuff. You, you, pr proof is a very slippery animal to get a hold of. I mean, you can, <laughs> you can have evidence that powerfully supports something, but proof... Proof is, that's something that exists within the scientific realm that you can, you can prove something with operational science, but to, to prove a past event, right. it, it can't really be done. Facts are observable, right? So if you're going to make, uh, say this is proof positive that, that something has happened or this is the way something works, well, if I set up an experiment and repeat it over and over and we can look at the result, we say, great, that's a fact, that's proof. But if you're trying to prove something that happened in the past but you can't repeat the experiment, how, how can you say that you're, you can yeah. never do that? I mean, yeah. think, think of this. How could you prove the resurrection of Christ? Right? How, how, could you category, how can you prove that in the same way? I, uh, we can't do a repeatable test yeah. to, to prove yeah. that. I know that Jesus rose from the grave because God's revealed that to me, and we can re read that in his word. But to say for the people that are doubting the, the age of the earth, uh, a lot of them doubt whether, whether Jesus came back from the dead, too. So. Right, yeah. I mean, another comment that he made was uh, um, that a lot of people will discard the more important things that the Bible talks about if, if it's suddenly proved or something. Yeah. And the response was, in fact, we find the very opposite. We, most, we see that most people can see through the strained rationalizations of those who deny the plain meaning of Genesis and try to make it mean millions of years. So that our experience as a ministry that promotes this notion that you just take the, the words in Genesis as they're written and uh, draw the meaning from that, it's a recent creation in six literal days and a global flood, that people's faith is strengthened by that, that people aren't, aren't uh, 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 pushed away and so on. And, and they can see the, the compromise theories more clearly. Right, it's, because the, the Bible is very plain on, on the age of the, when you think about it. So it is, people yeah. can detect when you're kind of trying to fudge the, the story. And, and make it say something it doesn't clearly say. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Creation, Creation.com slash free mag. You can look at a free sample creation magazine there. And we'll be back next week with evidence for Noah's flood. Evidence for a global flood is next week on Creation Magazine Live.